How's everybody doing today? You're watching Slot Car Mayhem. I'm John, and this will be episode 9 of Glendale 65. And today we're going to be talking about track wiring. One of the most common questions I hear is this. I have X number of feet of track. Do I need power taps? Let's redefine the question. I have 65 feet of Carrera track with seven powered lane changers and plan on running a full complement of six cars, driven cars, ghost cars, pace cars, etc. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Let's discuss briefly why we may or may not need power taps. First off, forget track length. The track length itself has very little to do with power requirements as far as taps are concerned. What matters most is the joints, both the number of the joints and the condition of those joints. These joints are what cause the issue, also known as voltage drop across the joints. These little voltage drops add up across the length of the track and usually see the highest voltage drop about midway as power is received from both sides of the control unit, assuming that all joints are in the same condition. The funny thing about track, it's not a static thing. It'll shrink, it'll grow with environmental changes. The cars themselves can actually hammer the joints around and causing a little movement in them. And while Carrera track has stainless steel rails, track with regular steel rails can suffer from corrosion in the joints developing in time. And all of these things can lead to problems in the future. Even if your track is running fine today, it doesn't mean that one day all of a sudden you'll notice a slow spot in your layout. Okay, let's talk about the digital lane change sections. These are simply solenoid activated mechanical sections. In other words, they're power hungry. Once again, these can suffer from excessive voltage drop issues and show up as a misfiring or troublesome when in fact it's just simply buried deep in the layout and thanks to voltage drop, it's not getting full voltage making it operate a little slower than it should. Once again, it's not about distance, but it's rather about the number and the condition of the joints. So, when talking about a permanent or semi-permanent layout, I like to think of power taps as first, an attempt to prevent power issues in the future, and second, to make sure the digital lane change sections all have clean and full power. My two rules for power taps are easy enough to factor in, and they're simple enough and they do provide a very good starting point. Number one, I provide a power tap at the end of the piece directly in front of a digital lane change section, including pit lane entrance. I like to add tabs to the piece directly ahead the, of the lane change section with a simple fact that prevents me from having to disassemble the digital lane change section itself. After that's complete, I then go back and I limit the number of joints between power taps to 10. I'll add any additional to make sure there's no more than 10 joints. So let's go ahead and walk the track and uh, we'll apply these rules and see exactly what we have. Okay, we're here at the track, and what I'm going to be using is some masking tape. And I'm going to want to start putting some, uh, there's my masking tape right there. And I'm going to want to put tape where I want the uh, power taps to go. To start with, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look and we're going to find all of these lane changers and the piece directly ahead of the lane changer. That's the direction of travel. The piece directly ahead of the lane changer, right here in this case, I'll put a power tap. Now if we go over here, if we look at this lane changer over here, it's right next to the control unit. Well, the control unit itself is a power tap. So we don't need to do anything here. However, I'm still going to mark this piece. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to mark all these uh, lane change sections, the pieces directly ahead of the lane change sections. And uh, I'll show you what we have as far as power taps for that. Okay, what I've done is I've run through the track and I've put a piece of tape just like this, get it nice and close. You can see it's on the piece directly ahead of the digital lane change section. And I flagged all of these like that. The exception to that, of course, is over here. I have the control unit, which is already a power tap. So I don't need to do anything here. However, I did put a piece of tape here and I'll show you why we did that here in just a minute. But not counting that piece, let's go ahead and count and see how many we have. Starting at the control unit, we come all the way around onto the back side. First piece is right there. That's one. Come around this way. Another one right there. Two. We got one right there. Three. We have four right here. 
number five, number six, and we're back to the control unit. So currently right now we have six pieces where we're gonna be putting power taps on. And once again, these are all in front of the digital lane chain sections. This is the first thing you want to address. Every single digital lane chain section should have its own power tap on the piece directly in front of the uh, digital lane chain section. The reason why I like to put those ahead and uh, not on the digital lane chain section itself is that way I don't have to do disassembly to uh, put a power tap in place and possibly void a warranty if somebody's interested in the warranty. So right here, it's more than acceptable. Okay, so now we're back at the control unit again. And uh, I remember I said that I wanted to go ahead and put a piece of tape on here anyway. And the reason why is because now we want to count joints. And the, what our end game of counting joints is, we want to make sure we have no more than 10 joints before we have another power tap. So starting from the control unit, let's go ahead and count and see what we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So this one third straight section here will get a power tap. Okay, I've got my piece of tape in place. And if you notice, this is the section, of course, I want to have the power tap in. But I put the piece on the trailing edge of the section of track. In other words, the direction of travel is this way. And I put it on the trailing edge, and that's going to help me keep the polarity correct. And I'll show you how that works when we get ready to uh, add our power tap to this particular section of track. Okay, let's go ahead and continue counting and see what else we have. Okay, once again, we're starting here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got one under there that's eight, nine, and ten. But this piece here is already directly in front of the lane changer, so we already have a uh, power tap here, so this piece is good. Let's continue on. I don't get caught here on all this stuff. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 12, I've got 12 here. Now I could go back to 10 and put a power tap here, but since we're only going to 12, I figured why not, I'll just split the difference and make it six. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. So this piece here needs to get a piece of uh, tape and that will be my uh, power tap here. Okay, so I've followed the rest of the layout all the way around, and I've got A, a power tap preceding every digital lane change, and B, no more than 10 joints between any two power taps. So we've got that accomplished right now with all these little pieces of tape you can see. Maybe you can see, I don't know. And the grand total is eight. So on this section of track, or this particular layout, I'm gonna end up with eight power taps. Might seem to be a little excessive. However, uh, it's gonna ensure a very reliable running track and I don't expect to have any major problems in the future once this track itself is completely closed off with landscaping and such. I don't wanna to have to go back into it to try to fix power issues. So we'll go ahead and take care of them now while the track is open. It's not very hard to do at all, so now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do for distribution of the power.